Hello and greetings. It's a pleasure to be able to bring the Lord's word uh, to you once more. You know, when um, I started my lay preaching, um, I used to get very agitated and upset when um, I saw someone sleeping during my sermons, you know. I used to think that it is really rude and unspiritual for the person to do that. Uh, I mean, how could somebody sleep, especially when a splendid preacher like me was preaching, right? I was, I had put in a lot of effort to prepare. I had put in a lot of, uh, you know, research and prepared the message. And then, uh, you know, I go and deliver it so passionately. And then I see some people sleeping. I just couldn't fathom it. That's really when one of my spiritual member, mentors, you know, opened up my eyes, opened my eyes uh, to uh, the uh, fact that sleeping during a sermon is actually biblical, right? And uh, that's when, um, you know, that, that's the first time that uh, I came across the second reading that we went through uh, today, right? Acts 27 to 12, where... Paul goes on preaching and uh, Eutychus, uh, you know, falls asleep and falls down from the window. So, uh, you know, so that that really taught me that, right, if, if someone can sleep in during Paul's uh, sermon, what am I, right? What am I? So from that day onwards, I have never felt bad about someone sleeping during my sermon. And uh, the only request that I have had uh, for someone sleeping during my sermon is that they should not disturb someone else by snoring loudly you know well uh, jokes apart uh, right uh, today's theme is the life-giving power of god life-giving power of god the first passage that was read to us from ezekiel is a beautiful passage right uh, ezekiel 4 47 1 to 9 and then verse 12 it is a beautiful vision um, you know so and it is a powerful vision so mystical and so spiritual and so strong and it is obvious that the prophet is not referring to the waters that are brought to the temple through the pipes and stuff like that he is referring to the holy waters he is referring to the holy waters he is re referring to the the rise and the depth of the holy waters he is referring to the healing powers of the holy water and the fact that the 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 the, the holy waters have the virtue of life giving this vision um, you know if, if you really um, uh, you know go through some of the prophecies would realize that this vision is in line with uh, the, the the prophecy that uh, Zechariah did and Zechariah prophesied in Zechariah 14 verse 8 if you go to uh, that you will read it like this you said it says that and in that day it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem half of them towards the eastern sea and half of them towards the western sea uh, in in both uh, in both summer and winter it shall occur right the the, the, the flow of living water I mean, in all directions, literally, is what was prophesied by Zechariah, and that is really what is being seen by Ezekiel in this vision. If you really, if you really analyze it, and and I don't know, and that actually, a psalmist goes to another extent, and the psalmist says in Psalm forty-six four, he says, "There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High." Right? There is a holy. There, there is there is a place. Uh, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. So, if you really, if you really go by, go go further, deeper into the into the vision that Ezekiel sees in 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 the in, in, in the reading that was read to us this this morning, we will see that um, you know wherever the, the the living waters go, wherever the holy waters go. It heals, as as it is, uh, you know, described in verse eight. Verse eight says, "This water flows towards the eastern region, goes down to the valley, and enters the sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed, healed, right? And then we also see that these living waters are 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 life giving. Are, are, you know, they, these are teeming with life, right? In verse nine, uh, it says." Uh, that it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live there will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes wherever the river goes 
And if you really look back into God's plan at creation, this was so God's plan at creation, right? If you look back into Genesis, if you look back into Genesis and read Genesis 1, 20 to 21, you would, you would know that. Then God said, let there be water, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living thing that moves and with, with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. So this, 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 this concept of the living waters, this concept of the holy waters teeming with life was there and what, that was God's plan right from the beginning that the living waters should team with life, with, 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 you know, with living creatures and stuff like that. But then something happened, all of us know, right? God's plan that was there during the creation, we men didn't allow it to happen. We humankind didn't allow it to happen. We sinned. We messed up things, right? And when we messed up things, all that we deserved was barrenness and dryness and drought and death, right? As, as, it, is, as it is said in Deuteronomy 29, 23, uh, the whole land is brimstone, salt and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there. Like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. So this is the barrenness that we would have been living in if, if, if God was not gracious. Because of the sin that we, we, we got into, this was what we deserved, barrenness, death, no life but then god in his mercy god is a loving god god is a gracious god so god in his mercy didn't want us to live in a barren life god in his in his in his mercy didn't want us to be uh, dead he wanted us to have life and he wanted us to have life everlasting abundant life abundant life right and, and so through the visions that God gave prophets like Ezekiel and Zechariah, God was speaking about the greater grace that was to come. The greater grace that was to come. And so the, 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 the vision that Ezekiel saw was just the beginning of the glory and the grace of the life give, and the life-giving power of God. It, but we know Right. We know that it was, it, was, it was through Jesus Christ that God perfected that vision. This vision pointed to Jesus Christ. This vision pointed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. For us living on this side of the cross, we know that this vision refers to the gospel of Jesus Christ that emanates from Jerusalem and then goes into the Samaria and, you know, and all over the place. Right? Uh, so, but emanates from Jerusalem and then goes out into the world which emanates from Jerusalem and spread to the other parts of the world. We know that this is the vision that is confirmed by Apostle John in Revelation, right? In Revelation 22, 1, uh, John uh, says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. The vision of John. In Revelation 22 1 and that's really what 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 is the uh, the, 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 the the vision that that uh, that John saw is actually the the glory and the joy and the life-giving power which are grace perfected in Jesus Christ let me repeat that the vision that John saw in Revelation is nothing but the vision uh, 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 you know the vision that another version of the vision that Ezekiel and Zechariah saw but this time it is a vision of the joy and the grace and the life-giving power of God that was perfected in Jesus Christ because Jesus came so that you and I could have life Jesus came so that we could have life just as uh, the life-giving power of God was demonstrated through Paul in the in 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 the in in the incident that was read out to us in Acts uh, twenty-seven uh, to twelve. Right? We all can have that power. Remember, we all can have that power. 
because in, in because Jesus says in John 7:38 he Jesus says he who believes in me as the scripture has said as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water we need to believe we need to believe in jesus christ and we need to believe in his life giving power we need to accept the grace and the joy that the and, and the life giving power we, we need to accept that fact that the grace the joy and the life giving power of god is perfected through and only through only through jesus christ <coughs> if we do that the the life giving power of of god can be demonstrated by us also and that is the gospel of jesus christ so let's come to that uh, uncomfortable and provoking question have we really accepted that life giving water that jesus offers to us have we made any attempt at all to let the same life giving power flow out of us just like paul demonstrated on eutychus paul did this question is uncomfortable this question is uncomfortable right because if you're like me if you're like me our first reaction to jesus's offer will be in line with that of the samaritan woman you know the story of samaritan woman right so let's go to the Samar the, the story of samaritan woman uh, told in john 4 uh, 4 to 26 what happens is pretty clear uh, jesus uh, you know um, takes that risk of going and talking to a samaritan woman who generally is considered as a lower class than the jews but he picks up that risk and he goes and has that conversation and he starts the conversation with the topic of her interest which is water because she's come to draw water and so he starts that conversation with that topic of water asking her for water and then of course she uh, you know immediately blocks that initiative asking hey look i am a samaritan you are a jew why are you talking to me why are you talking to me not that jesus does not counter that argument directly but what jesus does is even more beautiful what jesus does is he takes that conversation to an entirely different level he takes that conversation to an entirely higher level higher level right higher level and he says he say and he 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 introduces this concept of the living waters to this samaritan woman he says uh, you know he he says in john 4 uh, 10 he says uh, if you knew the gift of god and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water so samaritan woman tries to block the conversation by saying that hey look we are not we are not at par we are not equal right i am a samaritan woman i am a different class i am a lower class why are you talking to me and then jesus completely lifts up that conversation to a different level saying that look it's not normal water that i'm talking about if you just if you just knew the gift of god and if you knew who he is asking for this we can talk about living water now again the uh, you know woman blocks his uh, initiative all right all right you're offering me living water and all that stuff but hey you don't even have anything to draw water with and the deep the water is the, the 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 well is deep how are you going to draw water right how are you going to draw water uh, you know and and so uh, and, and 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 so so basically and, and then of course he goes on to she goes on to argue that look it is jacob who has dug this well are you are you greater than jacob and all that stuff right again remember jesus doesn't confront her uh you know in a in a violent or in a provocative manner jesus takes it to another different level right jesus explains further what is it that he is offering jesus says in john 14 john 4 13 to 14 he says whoever drinks of this water will never thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that i shall give him will never thirst right sorry 
Now, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to into an everlasting life. So, so Jesus is actually taking that whole conversation into an entirely different. He is talking about eternity here. He's talking about everlasting life here. Right? He says, look, I don't need any implements to draw a water. Right? I am the source. I am the source. Because if anyone drinks the living water that I am having to offer, they will never thirst again. And not only that, they, this, this water will in them become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So what I'm offering is something beyond this world, beyond this life. That's finally when uh, the, the, the lady uh, ultimately succumbs and says, all right, give me that living water. Give me the living water. But note that the conversation does not end there. The conversation does not end there. The conversation go, goes on to her background that she is of, uh, you know, not of a good repute. Uh, she she had several husbands and the person whom she is living with is right now her hus not her husband and all that stuff. All that Jesus uh, you know, Jesus brings out and then that that reveals to her that, hey, you must be a prophet, right? And so, and then, then they start talking about worship. Where, where are we supposed to worship, right? We, we are supposed to worship in the temple and stuff like that. And then God, and then Jesus, of course, uh, you know, explains all that and then concludes finally by telling her in, G, in, in John 4, 26, I who speak to you am he. What he's referring to is, I am Christ. I am the Messiah that your forefathers have been talking about, that you've been hearing about. I am he. I am he. I want us to pause for a moment here and think about this interaction between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. How many times is, does the Samaritan woman block, Jesus, resist, Jesus' attempt to offer this life-giving power? How many times does she resist receiving that life-giving water that Jesus is offering? And then I would like us to think about ourselves for a moment. Forget about the Samaritan woman. How about us? Even though we are regular church goers, even though we call ourselves Christians, right? The question that I would like us to ponder is, have we really, truly accepted and received the life-giving power, the life-giving power that can come through Jesus Christ, that can come through Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are we, like the Samaritan woman said, are we just worshippers in the temple? Do we just worship only when we are in the church? Do we just worship only when we are in the church? Jesus told the Samaritan woman in John 4, 23 to 24, he said, but the hour is coming and, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This pandemic has actually probably helped us at least to move away from the fact that we've got to go to church to worship. Right? We are now doing it in, 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 in virtual settings, but hopefully these virtual worships will end, virtual services will end. But the question is, when that ends, will our worship also end? Will our worship also be restricted only to the church, whether it is physical or whether it is virtual? Are we worshippers of God in truth and spirit everywhere, anywhere, knowing that God is spirit and he is here right now. He is, he, he is when we, you know, whatever, wherever we are, he is there when we are sleeping. He is there when we are awake, when we are eating, when we are thinking, when we are watching TV, when we are reading, when we are angry, when we are scolding, when we have bad thoughts. When we do something inappropriate uh, using our use, using using the uh, the computers that we have, when we when we forward um, you know unnecessary messages in WhatsApp, he is there. 
is dead. He is dead. Are we aware of that? And are we aware of the fact that we can and we should, if we are true worshippers, we can and we should worship the true God in spirit and in truth. What type of worshippers are we? That message is meant as much for the Samaritan woman as for us today. Where are we in this? Where are we in this? Now, there's a simple test that we can run to, to answer this question, right? Paul was able to raise up Eutychus, right? Eutychus fell down, uh, he, he died, and Paul could raise him up because Paul had received that life-giving power from God, right? Jesus says that you can have that life-giving water flowing out of you. So we don't need to do, but we don't need to do anything as, as spectacular or as miraculous as what Paul did, right? He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, John 7, 38. Jesus' healing power. He is Jesus' healing power. He is Jesus' love for others. He is Jesus' compassion. He is Jesus' grace, the, 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 the grace that is perfected in Jesus Christ. He is, he is the prom, he, his promise of eternal life. Is it flowing out of our behavior? Is it flowing out of our day-to-day -day life? Is it flowing out of our hearts to others? That's the test that we can run to find out if we have received the life-giving power of God. If we have received the life-giving power of God, we wouldn't keep it to ourselves. It will flow out from us, as John 7.38 says, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So we, we can make it happen. But the question is, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? And are we willing to accept that and let that rivers of the, the rivers of living water flow out of us out of us let's pray that we will be receptive to the life-giving powers power of god that comes to us through the gospel of jesus christ and let us pray that we will not stop at just receiving it but that we will be dispensers of that grace we will be dispensers of that life-giving power to others so that others may know the truth so that others may come to light so that others may see christ in us and be saved thank you for uh, listening to me and may god bless you all